Well, hello. I got actually a couple of uh, new Savibis in. This one I didn't plan on getting, but uh, I got them anyway. So, uh, these two are uh, fairly new. I think probably everybody under the sun has uh, probably purchased them and uh, talked about them, but figured I would as well. And I'm going to start with this one. This is the uh, Savibi Chevalier. And this variant is using their Quiborcia wood, uh, which is... To me, a little interesting. About the only time you see the word uh, Quibartia uh, is from Civivi or Sencut or we any of those um, companies. Uh, and it's uh, kind of maybe a mistranslation or something like that. Uh, Quibartia with a G instead of a C is a series of trees that um, this wood most likely comes from because it shares all that sort of stuff there. Um, that includes, uh, African, um, uh, hardwoods, um, Bubinga is a very, very, um, uh, famous type that's used as a tone wood, and, uh, I think bass is more than guitars, but, uh, hey, it's still there. Uh, but I can say they did a really, really good job with this stuff. I mean, the, uh, the finish on it is great. It does have, uh, a couple areas that aren't near perfect but it's just around a couple of the corners but otherwise does quite quite well uh feels super nice and hard in hand so that's that's pretty darn good it doesn't have almost any chatoyance to it um if you're not familiar with that word it's kind of like um the the iridescence that you get off of um some uh polished and stained wood or like uh tiger's eyes or other um uh, minerals and things like that uh, and that doesn't necessarily have a whole bunch to it, but it does have nice figuring nonetheless. Uh, something that's uh, a little bit interesting about it, and I definitely can't show it under the camera so much, maybe just a little tiny bit. You need a whole bunch of light. So uh, if you do have it out in the sun and you kind of look at uh, the sun's reflections off of this, this thing sparkles like a twilight vampire. Uh, and that's because, uh, these woods are, um, they have a whole bunch of silica in them. So uh, what does that mean for you and me? Absolutely nothing. But if you are working with this stuff, um, more than other woods, you really do want to wear, you know, a face mask or respirator or something like that with this, because, uh, otherwise you're going to be inhaling a whole bunch of, uh, itty bitty little glass shards. I mean... They're not going to be sharp or anything like that, but they're still going to be in the air. So, yeah. All right. So, button lock. Uh, we got a flipper on here. We also have a long fuller. And you can uh, open that either way. You can spidey flick that. You can slow roll it because we have enough grip going on there. And, uh, of course, you can uh, do the centrifugal thing and that. Mm, excuse me. So yes, this thing is uh, very much a uh, modified sheep's foot. I say modified because it does have a little bit of belly to it. And uh, sheep's foot are most traditionally straight along with uh, worn cliffs. But this does make it just a little bit more viable for more than just a utility cut. It does have a little bit more of that belly there. I like that. Uh, we do have some uh, jimping kind of back here. Um... You know, if I do just the, uh, the hammer grip there, I can get all four fingers around there. Uh, and something that I do prefer on this, and the reason why I originally, uh, forewent picking that one up, is, uh, this one does not have proud liners. They are the same height as the scales there. You can feel them, but you also feel that contact patch of, uh, the rest of the handle there in, uh, you know, both the bottom and the top there for your, uh, thumb. Uh, which is definitely my preference. I do like that quite a bit. This guy is 14C28N, and, uh, well, they stonewashed it, so hooray, we don't have to uh, worry about any of that sort of stuff going wrong. Man, I gotta deal with a roll down there, too. That's a little weird and annoying, but all right. I must have uh, messed that up in uh, the initial sharpening there that I did probably, I don't know, a week and a half ago, something like that. Haven't had these things for an incredibly long time. But enough to uh, put them through the paces. Um, as always, this clip, I hate. Uh, 
I've already tightened it once, um, and yeah, it gives a little bit of wiggle, and uh, especially against the wood here, it will creak and everything if you're um, kind of holding on to it a bit tight. That's just kind of the, the nature of Civivi clips. Uh, I have purchased or ordered uh, a couple of um, titanium clips from uh, Etsy that uh, supposedly uh, match with uh, these Civivi clips. And I'll see if they're, uh, they're any better. There's still kind of deep carry-ish kind of things going on, but, um, you know, hopefully they're uh, a little bit stronger and uh, don't end up developing that same kind of uh, flex and um, wobble and stuff like that. But yeah, that's the, uh, the Chevalier here. We got, uh, I don't remember exactly what kind of length we got going on here. I think it's somewhere around three and a half inches. It's probably going to be a little bit less than that for uh, cutting length. Yeah, 3.45 as far as, you know, from of course, here up to there. So I think they they probably do end up measuring that at 3.5, but that would probably be from the start of the plunge grind. Plunge grind on this, by the way. Um, you know, it does not come out to the blade quite, and it's a fairly steep plunge grind, but you're still going to hit it fairly soon. That's just kind of the way that cookie crumbles. But, yeah, very attractive model. Uh, I do actually like the wood a little bit more than I thought I would. Um Thinking with uh, a lot of other uh, knives that are uh, using wood handles, uh, this stuff is uh, quite a bit denser, so it does feel a little bit more quality than uh, some of that other stuff does. But still has some nice uh, figuring on it. Uh, let's see, if you're in uh, metric land, then the uh, the, the uh, edge is going to be uh, 87.6 millimeters there for it. Eh, let's see. Thickness, I think this thing isn't too per thick. Well, it's basically a five zero point five one, so right around at that uh, Spyderco PM2 territory there. And we do have a recessed button there for it uh, to make it just a little bit more difficult for you to, I guess, accidentally close. Uh, compared to some other um, models, like this one that comes to mind, the uh, the Feldspar with a button lock that goes right down to the point there. I don't have much of a problem with it, but uh, it can release on you just maybe a little tiny bit easier. So I do like to see that. Pretty darn good slicey blade. Not super tall, but for sheep's foot, it is also a little bit taller than uh, kind of what I'm used to with a lot of them. So that's kind of interesting there. I guess if you're also in the metric, then this thing is about 13 millimeters um, thick at the handle there. And the blade stock, uh, I don't remember, 3.2 maybe? No, 3.0. Yeah, basically three millimeter blade stock thickness. And again, this is a 14C28N, which, again, man, you can just barely make it out there at the top here after the uh, the stone washing and the, uh, the light color that they've done for the laser engraving on that. Really hard to see, but it's there. I kind of would have preferred to have this in Nitro V, not necessarily because 14C isn't a bad steel, but a little bit like D2, I have so much of it now that, you know, I do like something just a little bit new and fancy and different. And uh, that's where uh, this one comes in. This is uh, another Civivi C model. This is the Conspirator. Uh, very, very different finish on the blade, as you can see here. Uh, this one, and as you can see as I zoom in, it's Nitro V instead of 14C 28N. This one did come in some different variants as well. Uh, this one is the black micarta handle. And uh, the micarta on it seems to be about the same that they've used on, on a lot of their other um, Civivi models in the past. So this doesn't quite use that um, other micarta that uh, some sin cuts have been using lately. This does have a bit more texture going on to it though. So they've roughed it up a bit and that's definitely why you can see this kind of block here in the middle because that's where they've 
roughed up that patch to uh, give it a little bit more of that micarta feeling rather than that um, polished Play-Doh-esque feeling that uh, some of their other micartas have done. Uh, at the moment, doesn't actually look all that attractive, but I do know that, you know, as you use it more and more, uh, more finger oils will get in there and that color will blend in quite a bit. We got the flipper tab on this one, as well as not quite as long of a uh, fuller, but works super, super well for uh, all of that same stuff going on there. And flipper tab there as well. Uh, now this one does have uh, those shadow box liners, uh, so the so those black steel liners do sit up proud of the uh, the scales. It's not my favorite thing in the world. Uh, quite a few designers end up liking that, uh, but you know it's not the end of the world there. Uh, this one has jumping that goes out a lot farther, and I do actually like that quite a bit for just having that nice grip on this thing. Both of these guys feel super rock solid as far as that lockup goes. There's no rock whatsoever going on there. Feels super nice and um, strong. Yep, just the uh, the clip that ends up creaking. <laughs> but uh, yeah, this one ended up. Um, I guess somebody returned it to uh, White Mountain Knives. They didn't particularly like it. I don't necessarily know if it was the handles they didn't like or if it was just a knife altogether that they didn't. But uh, either way, this ended up going for a, a fairly decent price, so uh, I parted with some cash to go ahead and pick it up. Uh, this one, as well as this guy here, both of them, uh, you can switch that clip over to the left side. But, um, you know, as a concession to that, uh, it means that both of those clips do sit up rather than into the material. At least here for the uh, the micarta, that's probably a good thing. Uh, it does have more than one lash point, but with um, how easily some Civivi clips can get loose, that might end up just kind of damaging those scales over time. Something like this guy, eh, probably could have, but I guess it would have ruined that flat aesthetic that they were going for. That's okay. But yes, as I mentioned, this one is in Nitro V, and this is basically like an acid uh, stone wash. Going on here rather than just a uh, standard stone wash that they did on the 14C. Uh, both of these things can take a screaming edge. This one in the Nitro V, I think I've basically got just a bit of a better edge going on on it. I mean, both of them will, uh, yeah, definitely go right through some uh, phone book paper. No problems whatsoever. Just feels a little less draggy and a little less noisy going through it here with uh, the Conspirator here in Nitro V. But yeah, let's go ahead and uh, do a little bit of measurements here on this guy as well. Uh, how about clothes, because that's safer for me to uh, measure the blade stock thickness. Which is essentially the same. Oh. Well, 2.9, so it's uh, just a little bit thinner than uh, this guy is. Both of these things have that uh, typical Civivi grind. Very, very thin behind the edge there. So, uh, yes, they are slicing juggernauts. The, uh, the Conspirator, the larger one here, does seem to be just slightly thinner behind the edge. It does have like this little mar here. That was my fault. Uh, I basically pushed down just a little bit too hard on some belts when I was first doing that. And it brought the shoulder up on that little area just a little bit too much. And I thought I could sharpen out the rest of it. And of course, it's all nice and mirror polished, but didn't quite get up there. Maybe if I did have it at, uh, you know, a 16 or 15 degree edge angle, then I would have uh, sharpened through that. But either way, it doesn't affect anything whatsoever. And hey, once I sharpen it a couple of times, that's going to be gone. Uh, I didn't expect I was going to actually like this one as much as I did. But once I got it in hand, yeah, this thing... Um, Definitely fits my hand a lot better than uh, 
Oh, I forgot the name of it. Where is this thing? Ah, here we go. And uh, this guy. Let's, shoot, I think this one also has uh, another C name, but Cogent. That's right, yeah. Uh, which was another button lock. This was the uh, the first of the uh, non-locking button locks, like the, uh, the Elementum button lock is. And uh, yeah, this one... Uh, made me hesitant to pick up either of these because I saw basically those uh, kind of large areas there. And this one really doesn't fit my hand super comfortably. So this really isn't my favorite Civivi. But both of these don't seem to have that same problem. They are just a little bit uh, larger or longer as far as that handle goes. So I can get that full four finger grip. Really do appreciate that. And, uh, yeah, the action on them does seem to be just a little bit better than this. And I, that probably has something to do with the, uh, the blacking on the blade, whereas these are just kind of a, uh, stone wash of some sort. So that definitely helps a little bit. 13.3, uh, uh, millimeters essentially is what I'm, uh, Looking at here for the, uh, the thickness, so just a little tiny bit thicker than this guy here. What is that? Uh, 0 0.5, yeah, 2. Yeah, it's just a little smaller than that. So, yeah, 0 0.52. All right. As far as the uh, sharpened or the uh, blade length on this guy, right around the same. Uh, 3. Point Five, I guess, if you want to round up, a 3.46. Right around there, which is a really respectable blade length. Um, that's right around the sweet spot. I, I like anywhere between three and a half and four for me personally. And that's, you know, a lot because I'm used to larger knives and I also have, you know, big meaty claws that uh, kind of need a longer handle. So there you go. As far as the metric guys go, we got 87.8 millimeters there for the blade. Uh, I will do the weights here because I do have the, that here as well, but I might as well do some uh, comparisons here first. So I will go ahead and uh, open both of these guys up, kind of um, situate them close to each other so I can uh, Slap something in between, like say this uh, PM2 from Spyderco. Yep. Let's see, we also got the uh, the Benchmade 940 here as well. Uh, this one will be going back to uh, Benchmade uh, to pick up a replacement blade for it in the uh, the very near future. So that'll be kind of neat to. Uh, have one of those. Uh, I guess they charge $85 for these guys, uh, for the, uh, for a replacement blade of them. Uh, <laughs> I did ask them like, well, can I spend a little bit more and get the, uh, the S 90 V version of the blade? <laughs> and they, uh, they're, they're not going to do that, unfortunately, but, uh, I would have, uh, really appreciated that. That would have been kind of neat. Let's see, I guess if we're going for a uh, benchmade, there's the, uh, the bug out. And we can see the handle is yeah, right around that kind of, uh, well, I guess not. Now that I actually bump it up to uh, where they end out there at the top. Uh, let's see, how about uh, some more affordable options here? I got the, uh, the Ontario Rat number one. It's fairly large. And sure, why not? The, uh, the K-Bar Folding Hunter in uh, D2 there. Fairly small knife, but yeah, works out all right. Oh, why not? I got it sitting here, and it's probably right around there. Yeah, there's a the Spyderco Endura. This is uh, a little bit larger, but still fairly comparable in some size comparison stuff. There, so... All right, let's go ahead and take a look at some weights and measures here. Let's do the Chevalier first. 3.17 ounces, or very, very close to 90 grams. 
So under that ounce and inch mark. And here we go. The conspirator is 3.77 ounces. So not quite under that uh, ounce and inch mark. And that's coming in at 107 grams. I'm sure that uh, taller blade probably has a little bit to do with it, as well as the, uh, the handle scales being just a little bit taller and everything. But, uh, and yeah, yeah, yeah. But still, very usable and uh, nice pocket knives, both of them. Uh, I really still would prefer uh, to not have these uh, proud liners here. Uh, I know most of the time uh, when manufacturers design them that way, the uh, the blade ends up lining up with those proud liners rather than uh, underneath it. So if I wanted to take down the uh, the width of these um, liners to kind of have it more flush with um, with that, then that will kind of mess things up. So you're much better off uh, trying to you know manufacture your own scales for something like that if that's not what you like, just something that. Is a little bit taller, so they fit on there. But it's only if you're like me and you don't uh, particularly appreciate those. But if that is particularly the case, then you can go with this uh, Chevalier here. Um, this one does have uh, quite a few different um, handle scale options. This one's obviously the wood one, but uh, they do have uh, some G10 and I think a Micarta option. I think it's olive drab. I don't think it's uh, the black like this, but um, they're still both fairly uh, dark colored. And they also have this one uh, in their uh, Damascus blade, but you're going to lose a lot of performance for that because it's uh, 9CR18 MOV based, uh, also known as 440C. Very, 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 very similar as far as... Um, metallurgical makeup and all that sort of stuff. So yeah, you do end up losing performance for having those, those swirly colors on there, which is why I went with this guy. Uh, why I particularly chose the wood handle, I couldn't tell you, um, because it's supposedly the same uh, wood that they've used in some sun cut models that uh, I passed over using uh, the, the wood scales for uh, something else. But, I don't know. They, they they seem to work pretty well, and uh, this whichever species of woodwortia wood uh, that uh, they are using seems to be pretty nice and high quality. And uh, yep, it's full of silica. So yeah, you know, if you are working it or doing some modifications or whatnot, then uh, yeah, definitely wear some. Uh, mask protection or something like that but uh yeah i mean for your every everyday sort of stuff the stuff just feels like high quality hardwood like you would get on uh some decent high-end furniture so yeah works out pretty well but does make that pocket clip uh sound and creak even more uh noticeable than you would get otherwise so okay uh yeah i think between the two of them uh, i I do really, really like uh, the Chevalier design. Um, I think narrowly, uh, the Conspirator's blade calls out a little bit more to me, uh, just as far as I do like I'm just a little bit taller, and hey, this has a little bit more of that belly on there. So I can do a lot of that utility cutting and everything down there, but I still have some other stuff for... Um, cutting down onto a surface, which I do like to do from time to time, especially if I'm doing like a rope cut test or something like that. So this thing is probably a little bit more versatile for uh, for an absolute EDC sort of thing. But if you're just looking for a utility thing, the Chevalier is a pretty darn nice model. Yeah. Neither one of them uh, have I experienced any kind of lock stick or anything like that going on with them. So that's been pretty good. I have not actually opened up um, this conspirator. Uh, basically, out of the box, this thing has been, uh, you know, rather drop shutty. You still, when it's uh, free swinging, basically all of them, uh, and you are swinging that blade around, you do feel the uh, the bearing cages actually move and shift a little bit in there, uh, and 
So it does feel a little bit different and a little bit less smooth, I guess, than you would get out of um, something that has washers and a uh, free-floating thing like uh, an access lock or a if Benchmade did button locks or something like that. It's going to feel just a little bit different and probably a little bit smoother, but you are technically getting better action here with the bearings. So I suppose keep that in mind if you're someone who really likes to uh, waggle a, a blade back and forth with these button lock things here. Well, that's basically uh, everything I wanted to talk about between the two of them. Uh, this is probably one of my favorite Civivis that I've gotten so far. Uh, and it would definitely be my favorite if it didn't have the, uh, the shadow box liners on there. Just because, you know, I, I don't mind necessarily because this one's designed really to have your thumb up further rather than, uh, back here. Uh, a little bit more like it is on the Chevalier. So you're not interfacing, at least on the uh, the top side, where you're putting a whole bunch of uh, downward force onto it, uh, onto those uh, shadow box liners. But still, I don't necessarily like the aesthetic, but uh, apparently a lot of designers do, because a lot of them do this. So uh, there you go. That's uh, basically everything I wanted to cover on these two guys. Either one of them are uh, pretty good. Uh, I think I got both of these... Um, uh, they were well under 70 bucks a piece. So, uh, you know, still in that, uh, decent zone, right in that, uh, middle, uh, Civivi thing. Uh, I do have another one, um, that, uh, I might hit at the end of this video just to kind of look at it a little bit. From what I understand, uh, it came, it got discontinued, and I think it was just a little too expensive and, uh, a little too traditional. But, uh, hey. We'll, uh, we'll go ahead and leave it here, and uh, hopefully I'll have that on the end here. All right, yeah, it took me a few minutes to uh, find this thing because I uh, put it somewhere that uh, I forgot about, <laughs> but here we are. This is the other Civivi that I've picked up recently. This is the uh, the Appalachian Drifter 2. Uh, this is a front flipper here, and uh, pretty interesting. We've got carbon fiber bolster and um, this kind of two-tone micarta thing going on here has it as uh, well for the backspacer so i definitely like that for uh, consistency's sake so uh yes these things kind of came and went uh and i think part of that is the fact that they only made these in uh, s35 vn steel so this civivi over a hundred dollars and uh that probably right there alone made it um less interesting to people because uh they, they do like um you know the uh the cheaper civivi prices and stuff like that but i did decide to uh, pick this one up i had one uh that was returned uh to white mountain knives basically as uh you know the the uh, previous owner didn't like it wasn't used at all and uh yeah this one is a little bit different uh the pocket clip on this um I think is quite a bit of an improvement over their other uh, deep carry clips there. Uh, feels a little bit more sturdy. It's actually inset into the uh, uh, the handle scale material here, which in this case is, um, I don't know, I think they call it snake wood micarta, you know, the two-tone sort of thing going on there. But unfortunately, because it uh, curves, it does that cold steel kind of thing, so uh, it doesn't, it's not quite as compatible, so they don't have it uh, available to carry on the left side nor do they give you a pocket clip or the holes for it for that matter there um the other thing that i would say on this guy is it does have bearings in there but um this thing no matter what i do it's never gonna have great action on it so you know we gotta keep that in mind there uh but yes this thing is an s35 vn blade uh, pretty aggressive clip point going on there, uh, so fairly traditional looking. Uh, probably right around that uh, size of the uh, the Buck 112 Ranger, so not the full size 110, a little bit smaller, but uh, still works out all right. Um, and that top flipper, uh, it's very, very finely and uh, rounded jimping there, so I don't really have any luck getting enough grip to uh, try to... Yeah, that was... Fairly difficult and didn't feel super comfortable. But if this did have a little bit more 
aggressive jumping on there, I could do that easier. But the front flip works on it great. And, uh, you know, you also have that fuller. Because of that um, lack of uh, action that I was saying, unless you really give it the gusto, you're not really going to spidey flick this one open, unfortunately. And, uh, yeah, I did uh, disassemble this one and try and clean it up and tune it. And, uh, yeah, I'm just not going to get super great action on it. So that's a little unfortunate. But uh, the blade itself, quite nice. Uh, fairly thin. Uh, this is a 3 millimeter blade stock. And it's hollow ground as well. Uh, like a lot of other uh, models of things that uh, do a hollow ground, it is a, just a little bit thicker behind the edge here than if they would have done it in a uh, full flat grind. But um, this is still very, very, very much thinner behind the edge than you'd get out of uh, like a Two Suns uh, hollow grind kind of thing going on there. So that's pretty darn good. Uh, and this uh, S35VN seems to be pretty good. Um, you know, I was able to uh, put a decent edge on there. I think I have some uh, citrus juice up near the tip that's actually causing it to uh, drag a bit on there. I've been using it for uh, peeling some oranges <laughs> recently. But, uh, yeah, I do like the look. I like the, uh, the form factor of it. Uh, that's kind of nice. I do wish that... Uh, that... I could get a little bit better action since this thing is riding on bearings. And uh, I do wish that the uh, the jumping on this thing was uh, a bit stronger to make kind of a, a reach around flick open uh, much easier to actually pull off. But hey, the rest of it works out quite well. Uh, because this thing is, you know, a full banana curve sort of thing here, uh, I can... Um, you know, really get up there in that hammer grip and get that full four-finger grip. Uh, the blade is going to be a little bit close to my finger if I do that. And because of that curve, I suppose if I really, really was squeezing, it would be a little easy for my finger to, or my whole hand to uh, shift up a little bit. But this is definitely a, a light-use knife in general. So if I'm actually applying that much force... This wasn't the tool I should have been using in the first place, so I suppose that's going to be my fault for that. But still, because of that, uh, I can grip it back here a little bit, and that makes it more of a three-finger knife. That ends up uh, working out quite well. Uh, that clip point, you know, works out all right if you are um, using that little index finger. Uh, I will do that quite a bit if I'm uh, doing something like uh, peeling citrus. I can basically set the depth that I want the uh, the knife to be able to get into there with my finger. Then I can drag that along the uh, the peel and make sure that I'm not cutting into the fruit, something like that. So uh, I do I do appreciate that. And we have uh, just a little bit of a swedge going on with that uh, clip there, as is fairly darn traditional. You can feel a bit of a transition between the uh, the carbon fiber and the uh, the micarta there. Uh, not much at all, though. It really does take you basically dragging your uh, fingernail along it, uh, just kind of rubbing your thumb or anything like that, or a normal use. You don't notice it whatsoever. So pretty good fit and finish overall. I do like it. Um, man, I, I really do wish that they basically made this guy maybe subbing that uh, S35VN blade for uh, something like Nitro V or 14C28N, and uh, dropping that price down into the, uh, you know, 70s or something like that, I think this thing probably would have been a little bit more popular. But, uh, all right. Yep, now I've rambled on for uh, some new Civibis, but at least I'm covering them all here in one video instead of, uh, you know, trying to milk it and get three whole reviews out of these guys. <laughs> but, uh, all righty. Yep, as always, I appreciate y'all for watching. And, uh, yeah, have a wonderful rest of your day, yo.